I know what you're thinking. What's he been smoking? Nothing. I just wanted a little jungle music in the background. You know what I'm saying? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live. Got an interesting subject for us tonight, although it's not going to be very long. Um, but it, it hit me hard today, and I had something else planned for tonight, and I went, no, we're going to do this instead. Hey, Chad, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Tiny Joe, good to see you. Ron Murphy, Dinky Lane, Joe Pendergrass, Steve Allman, all of you guys, good to see you. Oh, hey, I have a special guest here this night. Hey, babe, 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 come say hi. Come say hi. Come say hi. Say hi. Not the most friendliest dog. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Facebook Live. Oh, now she's got a slobber on the screen. Ugh. Anyway, so I was inspired today, and uh, somebody was, uh, I know you kind of have a hard time believing this, but they were kind of complaining how hard motorcycle ministry was, and uh, how hard to uh, to do what we do and it's so expensive and the people aren't friendly and uh, you know we re we, we uh, go through a lot of a lot of resistance and pushback and um, it made me thinking uh, about the topic was motorcycle missionary how hard can it be how hard can it be so the background for this is um, if you're struggling a little bit in your motorcycle ministry, if it's not going the way you want it to go, if, you, if it's harder than you thought it was going to be, this is for you uh, tonight. My uh, little background, uh, and I'm just telling you this for, for context and background, my, my, my seminary work was done at uh, uh, the, the School of World Mission. At, it's one of the three schools at Fuller Theological Seminary in uh, uh, Pasadena. And it was the most exciting a couple of years of my education ever. Um, put you, put it in context. I was there because they had a wing on on church planting, and that's what I was there really for. Because I was preparing to uh, plant the Lamb's Fellowship, and but but the, the, my classes, which were anywhere from thirty to a hundred people, uh, I'd say over over two thirds of the people in the classes were preparing for the mission field. Uh, these guys were were planning on going to Africa, to Asia, uh, to Thailand, to to the Philippines, uh, to the American Indians. Uh, they these were these were the missionaries that we classically think about. And uh, I remember the last class that I the last class that I took. It was in like a kind of a, an, an indoor amphitheater, and um, there was about seventy seventy five students present. And and Peter Wagner was the professor, and he was kind of my mentor. And he asked an interesting question of the class. He said, how many of you here are from uh, countries other than the United States? And of the 70, 70 classes, uh, 70 students that were in the class, 50 of the folks there were from other nations and there was something like 30 or 40 nations represented who had come to study how to be a missionary. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget, um, he had one guy come forward who was, who was from Burma, uh, Burmese, and he was going to go back to Burma to be a missionary to his own people. And, and what he said, I've never forgotten it. And it's what I think of whenever somebody complains about how hard motorcycle ministry is. Uh, he said, as the, guy, as the kid sat down, he said, what you Americans need to understand is, um, and he called him by name, this, this young man going back to his, his own country of Burma to preach the gospel uh, has a life expectancy of about six months. And then he will be put to death for preaching the gospel. And uh, uh, he shared with him his friends and his family members that had been put to death for preaching the gospel. And that kind of puts a new spin on, on what uh, being a missionary is when you think in terms of motorcycle ministry. <clears throat> I want to read from some notes here that I wrote down today, and I'm going gonna, 
I'm going to put them into an article for the newsletter for those that don't make it to Facebook Live. The Black Sheep Pledge, and a pledge is a, is a vow, it's an oath, it's a promise, uh, it's giving your word. The Black Sheep Pledge begins with, I am compelled by the Spirit of God. What does it mean to be compelled? Uh, it means to be drawn, uh, to be pulled with a, with a deep sense of obligation or duty. Uh, I am compelled to be compelled by the Spirit to be in this ministry, to be a missionary. And then it goes on and it says, I understand, this is the, the potential member reading the pledge, I understand that this black sheep thing is a mission and that I am now a missionary. And I wonder how many of us really understand what a, a, a missionary is in the classical sense, uh, what they go through to become a missionary. Um, you know, my, my first thoughts are of a small man or a woman wearing khaki shorts and a pith helmet uh, covered with a mosquito net, kind of like the picture I showed you. Uh, evidently, Bailey doesn't like the lesson. She's starting to whine, but I'm here in the office by myself, so we'll have to deal with it. Um, a Christian missionary is someone who has dedicated their life in one way or another to fulfill the Great Commission, Matthew 28 to preach the gospel, to baptize, and to make disciples. Most missionaries will spread the gospel while performing some kind of a practical service, such as working at an orphanage or offering medical care or, or teaching people how to do, dif do different things. And by doing that practical deed of, of education or kindness or, or bringing health, what they're doing is they are uh, opening doors for being able to share the gospel. <laughs> Duck on it. You want to go out, let her go out. Here, go, eat the office. It's okay. Okay, she's gone. I know my wife's at home going, why did you take the dog to work? I have a friend, I have a couple of friends that are missionaries. Uh, Don Rogers, uh, a wonderful man, came out of youth ministry, being a youth pastor, and he went on a mission trip to Africa and he came back changed forever. And he ended up going to Africa, and he's been there for, I don't know, 25 years maybe? 25, 26, 27 years? Don Rogers is the head of a mission called Empowering Lives International. What he does is he teaches the poor people of Africa, which is most of them, how to start small, lucrative businesses so that they don't have to brew alcohol, which is a huge problem in, in, uh, in Africa or they don't have to sell themselves into prostitution. And so he'll do a thing like uh, uh, he'll get a small boat and a net and the necessary things for fishing, and he will sell, not give, he will sell that boat and those nets to a couple of guys uh, with the understanding that they're gonna pay him back. And he doesn't charge any interest or anything, but but they he wants them to earn it so that they own it. And now they were, they were, um, um, you know, uh, making alcohol but now they're fishing and they're actually making money and they're doing it in a good way uh, he also uh, had a series of pump sewing machines sent over to the country and he got a group of prostitutes together and he taught them how to sew simple projects so they could get out of prostitution and and could uh, could earn money for their family in a less dangerous dangerous way so that, that's what he did, was he went over there and he taught people uh, how to do these little businesses to make money. And in the course of being their friend and loving them and, and, and blessing them, he was also able to share the gospel with them and lead many of them to Christ. And he's been doing that for decades now, and he's very successful, and God is doing a good work there. And he's gone from Tanzania, where he started to... Uh, I don't know, maybe a dozen countries in Africa. I have another friend, and this one's this is really interesting. His name is Steve Fitch. Uh, you've heard him speak at ILS before. He was my church planting mentor when I started uh, Lamb's Fellowship years ago. 
Steve has since left pastoring the church and started a project called the Eden Project. And you can look both of these up online, Empowering Lives International uh, or the Eden Project. And what he does is he shows people how to plant trees by the, by the tens of thousands in deforested wastelands. Now, that's, that's not like a, like a tree hugger kind of a thing, but it's not because places like Ethiopia used to be lush forest. And, and in that forest was, was all kinds of ways that they made their money with animals and furs and, and, and the wood and everything. But, but they've, just, they've just cut everything down and used it for firewood. And he's going there and other countries. And he's in Ethiopia, he's in Madagascar, uh, several, several other countries. And he teaches these guys how to plant trees. And they plant tens of thousands of trees. And, and some of the, 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 the great tree huggers of the world are looking to him to see why he can do it uh, so much better, so much faster, and so much cheaper than some of these um, uh, these uh, organizations that are secular. And how come the people are, are their lives are being improved in the process? It's because of Jesus. So whether whether Don's teaching people how to fish, or whether Steve is teaching people how to plant trees. Uh, it's like the old missionaries who went for for um, medical reasons, or they were school teachers, or or whatever it was they were trying to do, help them to build their towns or build their churches. It's a way to be near people, where you can do something that's that's immediately important to them, needing uh, uh, necessary for them, something they need, but at the same time live Christ in front of them. And that's not so unlike what black du black sheep does. But I'll get to get to that in a second. So missionaries typically, as we're, as we're trying to understand what a missionary is, missionaries are usually thought to move to other countries, some staying for a few years, some staying for a lifetime. But in today's uh, fast-moving electronic age, missionaries can visit uh, countries and, 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 and uh, uh, through television, radio, and the internet, they can get an awful lot done. Now, Whatever their support function is, planting trees or, or teaching people how to fish or being a, being a medical doctor or a nurse, whatever their support function is, the primary job of every Christian missionary is to draw people closer to Jesus. That's the end game. Amen? We don't ever want to lose sight of that. There's a, there's a, there's a saying uh, called going native. And it, it's something that uh, uh, is, is applied to the early missionary work where people would, would go to another country and instead of sharing Christ, they would just become a part of the culture. Good picture of that is Tom Hanks uh, in, in the movie where he's stranded on the island. Now he goes there and he's a very awkward businessman, but by the end of the, end of the movie, you know, he's become a native of that island. He's learned how to fish. He dresses a different way. Uh, he thinks nothing about reaching down and pulling a sea urchin up out of the water and eating it raw. And we see people in motorcycle ministry that go native. They, they come in with the purpose of sharing the gospel, but they end up getting so close to the culture that they, uh, they start to become some of the negative things of the culture. And so that's what it's talking about. Anyway, whatever their support function is, the primary job of a missionary is to draw people closer to Jesus, not to get closer to their culture. In the case of black sheep, uh, the people that we're trying to draw closer to Christ are, of course, bikers. Uh, not people who simply own a motorcycle, uh, but people who have have embraced the motorcycle culture. Embr See, I've embraced the motorcycle culture. I love these people. I love the things they do. I love the things they eat. I, I love the, the rallies they go to. I love the music that they typically listen to. And a, and a subculture is defined as a group of people within a culture. So we have the culture of the United States, and then you have the subcultures in the United States. You've got cowboys, and you've got surfers, and you've got bikers, and, and you've got uh, um, uh, you know, people that, are, that, are, that they just spend their entire life going to college, and you've got the homeless. And even the homeless becomes a, a subculture of people. So a subculture is a group of people within a culture, that differentiates itself from the, the mother culture. Subcultures develop their own norms and values regarding culture. So that's, that's who black sheep is. Missionaries start by becoming really familiar with the people, who they are, uh, uh, learn their language, uh, learn some of the things that they do, embracing whatever elements of that lifestyle that they can truly align with, things that are amoral, uh, 
amoral uh, means it really has no moral value. In other words, a motorcycle has no moral value. You know, going to a topless bar has a negative moral value. When bikers raise uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year for for uh, muscular dystrophy or, or or for whatever, that's that's a a moral value. Topless bar, a, a non-moral or immoral value, and uh, the motorcycle is just a amoral. It has no no value one way or the other. It's just a thing. And so what missionaries do is they go to countries and they, and they learn as much of that culture, culture as they can and they embrace as much of the positive moral or the amoral or you know, non, non-moral issues and to become a part of those people. They'll, they'll eat like them, they'll listen to that music, they'll, they'll wear their clothes, they'll become a part of that group. A Christian missionary, of course, if they're reaching out to cannibals, <laughs> is not supposed to embrace that part of the deal. Uh, once locals become believers, they then need to be discipled, trained, and even educated to become pastors in the community themselves. The idea for a missionary is to come in, share the gospel, disciple these people, and then leave, allowing them to take over, uh, uh, become indigenous pastors and, and teachers, uh, raising their own people themselves. In some cultures, this can happen in a few years, but uh, in, uh, in, in some, it takes several generations to actually see a change. We hear about missionaries that have been in countries for decades without seeing their first, their first conversion. And, you know, that's, that's a real thing. The strategy for black sheep uh, is more for us to be fishers of men. Matthew 4, 19. To be fishers of men, to be evangelists, and to allow the local church to be the disciplers. And that's why it's not enough to lead somebody to Christ and then they join black sheep, but they don't get locked into the local church. We're not set up for that. We don't have the time or the resources for that. And why should we when we're surrounded by churches? We have 200 churches in the Temecula Valley. Okay, I don't need to start a Bible study. I don't need to start a biker church. I, I need to continue to be a fisher of men and that's what we're all about. Now here's the part where I, why I'm doing this, and I hope you guys are with me. I see some thumbs going up, so I, I hope that you're, you're, you're tracking with me here. The life of a missionary can be a difficult one. First come uh, the years of training that cover everything from theology uh, to culture to sociology, thinking, uh, learning to think how other people think. Um, they learn how, they have to learn a secondary job, whether it's nursing or teaching or or building or, or whatever they're going to use as their, as their uh, uh, way to get in the front door. In Black Sheep, you know, we don't, we don't have to go to college. We don't have to go to school. We don't even have to go to a trade college. We go through uh, 10 little lessons and, and you read a couple of books and spend a few months in observation and then we hit the road. It's, it's a very short uh, learning curve or uh, maybe I should say a very steep learning curve for black sheep to, because just because you've ridden a bike for 20 years doesn't mean that you're you're ready for motorcycle ministry. You're ready to ride a bike. That's a whole different thing than motorcycle ministry. And there's a very steep learning curve in our very short process. Some people say it takes three, four, maybe five months to become a black sheep. Guys, that's nothing. That's nothing. I have a very minimal education and, and I have seven or eight years in, in, in formal education to, to be able to be a pastor. A lot of, a lot of pastors have 10, 12 years uh, to, to be a pastor, and we do it in a matter of months. And that's probably why some people are, are asking for mentorship two. And some have even set, said there's enough to do mentorship three, where a person goes through the first mentorship and they come into Black Sheep, but uh, they're expected a year later to go into mentorship two. In order, to, in order to be able to stay, and then possibly mentorship three. We'll talk more about that some other time. So missionaries, classic missionaries, they face danger as well as not being welcomed uh, by the, uh, the, the local people that they're going to minister to. And it's so funny, you know, uh, I'll, I'll talk to uh, people who don't understand motorcycle ministry and, and They'll say, gee, I, I don't know that I could go to Sturgis and, and be around all those bikers. That's, that's scary. You know, that's, that's scary. They're, you got Hell's Angels there, and you know, I don't know. You know, I got, that, 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 that frightens me a little bit. 
I've been in this over 20 years now, and, and I've never seriously been threatened by anybody. You know, I, I'm worried about the guy that wants to eat me in Africa <laughs> or, or kill me for my faith. Do you know the number one martyr, martyred group in the world today is Christians and mostly in the Middle East? They're killing Christians in, in, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, Islam countries, the Muslim countries, uh, by the thousands. Now, that's something to be afraid of. But missionaries, they face danger, uh, as well as not being welcomed by the local uh, people. Missionaries can get ignored in Denmark, but they can be killed in a Muslim country. Most of the perils in motorcycle ministry are found on the highway. Nevertheless, Jesus told his disciples, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. And so we need to understand that we're going out into a non-Christian environment, not whether they're going to kill us or not. They're, it, it's, a, it's an environment that you can get sucked into very easily, and so we need to be very careful. It takes a very special kind of person who is willing to spend their own time and money going to school, training for skills necessary to reach out to those who desperately need Jesus. The traditional missionary often leaves their country, their home, their family, and friends to work for very little money in a foreign country and sometimes hostile, sometimes for a few years, sometimes for their entire life. Uh, my wife was the uh, daughter of missionaries, and uh, they were not life missionaries, although they've, they've been in missions work for, for decades. They still have an orphanage in, in Africa. But Debbie lived in Africa and, uh, and in a couple other places for a year at a time, for, for a couple years at a time. And so she's been able to shed some light on this. But it's different with motorcycle missionaries. While there is some training a few weekends a year away from the family and an occasional rude comment from a drunk or angry biker, mostly we just ride beautiful motorcycles to interesting places where there's great food and great music. And sometimes we'll shine boots and sometimes we'll hand out cold water and maybe a little 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 literature and if we're really fortunate we have the opportunity to pray with someone or even lead them to Christ. Hello, that's the end game. Shining the boots is not the end game. Leading them to Christ is the end game. And what is the cost? Is the cost for being in motorcycle ministry seven years of education? No. Is the cost of, of motorcycle ministry, selling your home, packing up all your stuff, and putting it on a ship and going to a foreign country? No. Is is the cost of being in motorcycle ministry, um, you know, the, the chance of maybe being uh, kidnapped and taken away and martyred for our faith? No. The cost of motorcycle ministry is you have to buy a motorcycle. Yeah, I know you guys were dreading that one, huh? You have to buy a motorcycle and you got to get some insurance and buy a vest and a helmet and if you join Black Sheep, you got to pay about $15 a month. The truth is motorcycle ministry is so much easier and so much less in terms of what it cost us than any other missionary um, uh, job in the, in the world. Now here's the question. Does it make us any less worthy of being called a missionary? Do you have a, do you have a problem calling yourself a missionary? Is that too big of a word for what we do? Not if we put our whole heart into it. Not if we're invested, invested in motorcycle ministry. Not if we embrace, not complain, but embrace the hidden costs and sacrifices that these classic missionaries do when they go overseas. 
Not if we truly believe and embrace the importance of an, of an eternal soul being won or lost. It's okay for us to call us our, ourselves missionaries if it means something to us in terms of doing a good job or a mediocre job. I am compelled by the Spirit of God to be in black sheep. And I recognize that black sheep is a missionary organization. And I recognize that whether I'm taking the gospel to the hot and tot in Africa or the angry Muslim in Saudi Arabia or to some biker in Sturgis, the ministry is just as important. The mission is just as important as long as we are sincerely seeing it as something more than going on a motorcycle ride and getting some barbecue and seeing the sights. As long as we see the eternal ramifications of what we do. If we go to a motorcycle event and spend the majority of the time checking out the bikes and the vendors, we've used up God's time to do some other things that he wants us to do. When we're at home and we're, we're not at Sturgis, we're not at Laughlin, we're not at Laconia, and we allow something like the pandemic to get us depressed and stay at home and not do the ministry, we're missing the opportunity. Because missionaries don't get a day off, we do. They don't get much in the way of a vacation, we do. They don't get much downtime. They're on call 24 seven many times. And we have, I believe we have one of the most exciting, and I hate to use this word, but fun missions that exist. But we can't take it lightly. And we dare not complain about it's too hot to ride or it's too cold to ride or it's too far to ride or I don't want to shine boots. I, I want to go test drive the new bikes. Or, or I, I wanted to be chapter president. I didn't get elected, so I'm going to quit. See, when we play those kind of games, we cease to be missionaries. And we become little more than tourists. And I challenge you to embrace what it is to be a missionary. So that you can say, with no apologies, I'm in a very serious ministry. I'm a motorcycle missionary. I take the gospel to those who ride. I may not be cooked in a boiling pot, but I might get torn up on the freeway. But I've been called, I've been compelled. And so I do what I do because God's called me. Has he called you? I think many of you, most of you he has. I think some of you might just need to do a little soul searching. God, am I serious about this? Do I understand what it is to be a missionary?